This is a 21-year-old male with persistent knee pain following trauma. Initially, we will look at the sagittal images, proton density, and T2 weighted, and we can see we're beginning medially, and on our mo most peripheral images, we see a normal appearing anterior and posterior horn of the medial meniscus. As we move more toward the intercondylar notch, we can see high signal within the medial meniscus that touches the inferior free edge, and this can extends into the posterior meniscal root as well. The posterior cruciate ligament is intact, but as we move into the anterior cruciate ligament, we can see extensive high signal intensity representing a complete tear, and the anterior or distal portion of the anterior cruciate ligament is much too horizontal in position, consistent also with that complete tear. There is a moderate to large knee joint effusion in the suprapatella bursa. As we move toward the lateral meniscus, we can see the typical pivot shift bone contusion pattern in the lateral femoral condyle and the posterior tibia. In addition, if we look at the lateral meniscus, we can see a subtle area of vertical linear signal touching the superior and inferior free edge, and posterior to this is some intact normal meniscus. So this represents a vertical longitudinal tear. These are highly associated with anterior cruciate tears, but can be easy to miss because one can assume that's just fluid around the popliteus tendon. As you can see here, this is not around the popliteus tendon, but is a vertical oriented tear in the peripheral red zone. On our coronal images, we will look more extensively at the collateral ligaments. We can see the normal conjoint tendon here, the normal fibular collateral ligament, and the normal iliotibial band. Medially, we have some mild thickening around the MCL with slight edema representing a mild sprain. We always want to look at all abnormal structures and normal structures in multiple planes just to make sure we are dealing with the same abnormality in those planes. The posterior cruciate ligament again is intact on the coronal plane. As we move into the anterior cruciate ligament we can see marked high signal intensity against the femur and we can match that with our axial images again where we can see extensive high signal representing the full thickness tear of the proximal portion of the anterior cruciate ligament. We can note the contusion pattern again in the lateral femoral condyle and lateral tibia. Note that there is a small focus of subchondral edema also, likely representing a small osteochondral type injury. On our axial images, we will start to look at the patellar cartilage, which is normal both in the lateral and medial facet, and the trochlear cartilage is also nicely seen and normal. Note that the patellar tendon is slightly lateral in position, likely representing a patellofemoral tracking abnormality, but no underlying hyaline cartilage defect uh, is seen. Again, we can see the contusion pattern in the posterior lateral tibia. So in summary, this represents a patient with a full thickness anterior cruciate ligament tear at the proximal extent with associated vertical vertically oriented tears in the posterior horn and body of both the medial and lateral meniscus and the typical contusion pattern in the posterolateral tibia and femur.